What are the issues keeping CEOs awake at night? And how can business leaders help shape a more sustainable world that works for us all? I'm Hala Mohyadeen. Welcome to Global Perspectives from KPMG. Transformation and change in the workplace impacts us all. For business leaders, it's arguably one of the biggest opportunities for and risks to growth. I'm joined today by Celine Schillinger, an award-winning entrepreneur whose bold vision of change, engagement and leadership led to her being knighted by the French government. Celine, thank you so much for joining us on Global Perspectives. Thank you. Now, your first book was called Dare to Unlead. Can you tell us what you mean by unleading? The topic seems to actually strike a chord. Uh, the book was just uh, recognized as the Leadership and Strategy Book of the Year by Porchlight in, this, in the US and it has also been uh, included in Thinkers 50 uh, book list for the best new management book of 2023. So people are sensing that there's uh, something promising in this uh, notion of unleadership. So, and the title, Un Dare to Unlead, is, uh, as you may have noticed, a respectful nod to Brene Brown, but uh, it's more than a play on word and it's uh, certainly not a gratuitous um, provocation. What I what I, my experience has been like 30 years uh, spent in the in the corporate world on several continents in high paced roles, uh, global roles and so on. And I've noticed that traditional approaches to leadership are sort of running out of steam and are even becoming clearly toxic. And I think that the injunction to be more leaderly or to be better leaders or to uh, cultivate the leader in us uh, are actually not part of the solution. They're part of the problem. Uh, and we've become addicted to this notion of um, leadership as, you know, the superhero, the person pulling everybody else towards the future along his or her vision. And it has certainly served us in the past, but it's no longer serving us uh, today. And from a, a human, social, environmental, even from a business perspective, I think leadership as it is understood today is a catastrophe. Uh, it is really not uh, what is going to help us solve our mega problems, uh, if you wish. So Dare to Unlead explores the opportunity we have to um, create different practices in the workplace that uh, bring people together around a really a collective uh, practice of leadership, which is digitally enabled. Uh, where people connected together through networks in communities, um, fueled by a sort of activist mindset, you know, achieve, create value together. Uh, that's that to me is the promising um, uh, pathway for for the future and uh, something that can help us reinvent leadership, uh, a reinvention of leadership that works today and that serves our our organizations much more than what we do uh, currently. Now, you've spoken extensively about the fragmentation of the world. Why is effective leadership such an urgent issue right now? Yes, uh, you've noted it's uh, increasingly we're, we, we're living in a fragmented society. We are, it's difficult to create a collective for, for many reasons. You know, the great unifying ideologies of the past have uh, sort of disappeared. The, the consumer a society, liberalism, the society, uh, the service uh, economy and so on have all um, cultivated the individuation of needs and its uh, identities are more and more specific. We no longer define ourselves you know, into uh, big groups. Um, and so it, it's hard to, to make people stick together. And yet it is of enormous importance for organizations to keep collectives together. And it's more and more difficult because more and more of the employees are contractors, for example. Um, keeping uh, people together is no longer uh, effective by uh, using our, um, authority arguments, for example. Uh, we are sort of re reluctant. We are more and more reluctant to um, authority. Uh, the young generation doesn't have the same um, 
relationship to authority as we and to hierarchical you know positions as we used to have uh, in the past it is uh, it is a challenge to keep people together so and we can no longer as well i believe use the force of control and bureaucracy because it's too slow because it uh, it prevents Uh, organizations from being agile, from being innovative, etc. So we we really need to um, uh, to invent new ways to make collectives stick together and create value together. And why do do we? What are the indicators of this crisis? Uh, you can there are actually plenty. You can see disengagement soaring. Uh, the cost to the global economy is estimated to be around seven billion dollars per year in lost productivity. Uh, the cost of burnout as well has been evaluated by the WHO to be around $1 billion per, per year to the global economy in lost productivity. And disengagement is not just a matter of morale. It has direct consequences on quality, on safety, on security, on customer service, and so on. So it's uh, it's really time we, we move to other product practices that are more respectful of people and that are also delivering better results for businesses. Well, I'm sure many of our CEO listeners believe that they're probably pretty good at leadership. What advice would you offer them in terms of understanding what they're getting right and where they can improve? I believe a large, very large proportion of CEOs, maybe 99%, uh, are doing their work very seriously with, you know, great sense of purpose, a great sense of duty. And uh, and this is a, a highly respectable job. It's um, <laughs> complicated. Uh, they are under enormous pressure from all around. Uh, it is coming from, from everywhere, basically, markets, clients, uh, media, uh, and so on. And, um, and people feel responsible and they, they um, you know, seriously seek to develop their organization and their, and their people. But, um, you know, I once met a strong man, uh, like a real one. He was a competitor. He was pulling planes <laughs> all by himself, <laughs> like uh, massive locomotives and, and uh, you know, all by, him, by his brute strength. And many CEOs make me think of that kind of competitor, the superhero, the person, you know, pulling everybody across um, hurdles and across all the change initiatives and everything. And it's really hard, but they feel responsible, so they shoulder on. And... Um, and yet, I believe there's a huge potential, a huge hidden reserve across everywhere in their company. And if we could distribute leadership more, if we could have more people um, rise, you know, stand up to to leadership and actually share the not just the um, um, implementation, the execution of tasks, but also the sense making, the decision making, the innovation, etc. If we could distribute that more, we could create a, a much bigger collective capacity. This is the uh, the kind of leadership I'm calling for, where leadership is seen as a collective capacity that emerges from a dense uh, network. Of, of relationships, of quality relationships within an organization. So I feel that uh, the, really the task of uh, leader, leaders today is to develop the social fabric of their organization using digital, but also using innovative community engagement approaches. For example, uh, drawing lessons from social movements, etc. Because there are, um, you know, great. Uh, elements in uh, uh, that tri to trigger the uh, human dynamics, relational dynamics that really help us and serve our organizations and pull them into the future rather than slowing them down with recipes of the past. Hey, Celine Schillinger, thank you so much for joining us on Global Perspectives. I'm joined now by KPMG's Global Head of Corporate Affairs, Jane Laurie. Jane, thanks for speaking to us on Global Perspectives. We've heard from Celine Schillinger on the urgency of effective leadership. In your role, I'm sure a lot of your time is spent guiding KPMG's leaders and helping to translate their visions into strategy. Given how fragmented and unstable the world is right now, do you believe leaders are largely responding effectively? 
Well, first, hi, Halla. Great to be on the podcast today, and it's good to speak with you again. Um, as you say, yes, there's no doubt that we are living through really turbulent times at the moment. In fact, you only have to look at the devastatingly high temperatures we're facing right now, um, and it's a really stark reminder of some of those problems. But in terms of how leaders are responding, well, I think leaders understand um, that to solve these kind of global complex problems, we need a different kind of thinking. So more problem solving, connecting multiple issues, um, greater collaboration across disciplines, across geographies. And all of that actually really needs a different kind of leadership. And I would say, actually, there's no doubt in my mind that COVID had a role to play in changing the skills that is needed in leadership today. Because if you think about it, throughout the pandemic and lockdowns, people around the world were perversely actually in a way more connected. Um, at least that was my experience in our, our business. So the super fast way that we rolled out technologies like Teams, um, which allowed us to bring people together, combined with those shared experiences we all face through this common crisis, developed a different kind of work culture and community. The leaders were able to speak more directly to more of their people more often, and more people were in a position where they had to act independently and, and take more decisions. So I think naturally, um, and Celine talked about it, you have more of a sense of distributed leadership or what some might call leader plus, where leadership is really spread throughout the organization. And I think that that is why this notion of purpose has become so front and center of leaders' vocabulary today. And actually, our CR look research showed that about three quarters of all business leaders see purpose as a critical um, element of driving their financial performance through to customer satisfaction. So really central to what they do. And of course, that actually makes total sense. Um, so if we are going to have more of what's leaned to called distributed leadership, it's really critical that everyone has a shared purpose. So who they are as a business, what they stand for, what they want to achieve. And I'd actually take that leader plus model a little further and say it's not just within a business's four walls where leadership, distributed leadership actually matters. If you think about the global nature of some of those macro issues, increasingly businesses and organizations with shared purpose and values can come together to deal with those global problems. Um, so I can quickly just give you a quick example. If you look at the recent announcement of the International Sustainability Standards Board, ISSB, who've released um, new guidance for non-financial reporting, I think it's a really clear example of collaboration. So it's formally, formally the ISSB uh, set up in um, Glasgow COP26. It brought together thinking from multiple organisations and created a baseline for reporting on sustainability with the intent not just to report, but to understand how businesses can make the most significant impact. So I would say Halla right there is a good example of how leadership today responding to the world problems is really about purpose and collaboration. In many ways, ESG and good leadership go hand in hand. I know you're a strong advocate for KPMG's bold ESG strategy, why does it matter so much? Well, that's a great question. But maybe why don't I I'd start with a, saying a few words about ESG? Because I think we know the term ESG is about um, environmental, societal and government issues that face any organisation. But although the term is actually relatively new, the content is not. Um, so businesses the world over have been working on what I'd call sustainability for decades. And that's sustainability in its broader sense of really across ESG. And they've been seeking to address those issues that are actually really core to the long term viability of their businesses. Um, so whether that's addressing the environmental issues that impact supply chain or it's about building a diverse workforce um, where you'll actually understand your consumer better and therefore uh, deliver growth. Um, I would say ESG in some respects, it's about enlightened self-interest rather than maybe some people would have seen it as altruism. And with that in doubt, to your question, I've no doubt that ESG and leadership go hand in hand because most leaders, I think, would say that their role is to leave the organisation better than they found it, um, which means they need to be creating the conditions for growth and they need to be creating a strong, really engaged workforce, back to the earlier point, um, 
centered around that purpose. So I would say for a business to be viable in the long term, it has to face those really strong environmental threats to the world and also face the, the threats to society. Um, well, quite simply, there will actually be no business. So if I turn to KPMG, I think for us as a professional services firm, it's actually interesting because we can make a difference in uh, two different ways. We can influence by the way uh, what we do ourselves, but also how we uh, work with our clients and what our clients do. So starting with us, back in 2020, we launched our impact plan, which described how we intend to deal with our ESG issues. And we report our progress against that every year. And what has become really clear to me and I guess the organization is that our impact plan is deeply rooted in our purpose and values, which is why, in effect, ESG becomes a DNA of the business. In fact, we describe it as the watermark running through the organization. But as I said, it's actually also possibly more important, the type of work that we do with our clients, which has a multiplier effect. So by working in 140 countries around the world um, and having connections with probably most of the world's leading organizations, by working together on some of the planet's most complex issues from whether that's decarbonization or building nature positive society, actually, um, we can contribute through the work we do with clients, which I think is very exciting. So, yes, in answer to your question, I am unashamedly a huge advocate for ESG strategy, um, and I only anticipate that this will become an even more important part of the leadership agenda, particularly going back to that point around uh, purpose and value. Jean Laurie, thank you for joining us on Global Perspectives. I'm Hala Mohiuddin. Thanks for joining us this month. We'll be back again soon with another edition of Global Perspectives. In the meantime, you can listen to all of KPMG International's podcasts by searching for KPMG on your podcast platform of choice or by heading to kpmg.com. <laughs>